Take you back. Do 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 do. Take you back. Yeah 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 yeah. Take you back. Do 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 do. Take you back. Well I've been told by do 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 do. Some people and they all say to take you back. Do 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 to take you back like before. I don't call this a reason. I just call it believing in myself. Take it back. Do 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 do. Take it back. Well, push it back. Do 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 do. You're pushing me too far. I love you for. Do 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 do. What I saw before. I squeezed you and I held you. But I could not tell you I love you. You you. Do 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 do, take it back. Well, you put me down. Do 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 do, you put me down real nice. Do 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 do, this love affair. Do 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 do, taking the largest slice from my life as a sin. Starting now, it's gonna have more meaning, girl. Do 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 do, take it back. Do do do. If I just take it back, do do do. If I just push you back, do do do. If I just love you back, do 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 do. Take it back. Okay, so after about a 14-hour day, we are here in Bishop. This is the Motel Six. Uh, very nice rooms inside. So ever around here but uh, we had an hour and a half drive to the airport this morning um, then about six hours on planes and four hours in a car to get here so kind of tiring day I've already got my permit at the ranger station White Mountain Ranger station and um, went and bought some fuel couldn't take that on the plane so got my pack situated already and uh, we're just kind of relaxing at the moment so we're kind of tired from the trip um, gonna eat some supper and call it an early night uh, starting first thing in the morning probably before sunrise at Sawmill Pass Trailhead uh, I'll tell you a little more about that one tomorrow and how crazy I am okay so it is almost six o'clock you can see the sun is just coming up uh, we are out here I'll turn around here sawmill pass trailhead out that way and uh, i'm gonna be heading this way here in just a few minutes i'm gonna let it get just a little lighter the trail's kind of hard to make out right now because it just kind of rolls through all the scrub so i'm gonna let it get a little bit lighter and then head out. It's a six o'clock on uh, September the 8th. Good morning. Okay, so as I said, it's uh, September 8th. It's just a little after six, about 6.10. And I've started walking. Uh, this is kind of the third leg of my JMT adventure. So this time I'm going to be going up Sawmill Pass Trail over Sawmill Pass. Um, if you watched my videos from last year, it's the trail I ended on. So as you can tell, it's kind of I'm in this desert. There won't be any water for about the first five miles at least. But uh, as I'm walking here this morning, I remember coming down. You know how he, you know, relationships, everything. You always remember the good stuff better than the bad. Some of the bad is coming back to me. Then I remember uh, telling myself that somebody would have to be crazy to go up this trail. But I'm kind of a glutton for punishment. So anyway, we're starting up 
Um, there is a lake about seven miles up if I just can't make it the whole way. My plan is to get over the pass this uh, today, go about 10 miles. <clears throat> the problem with that is there's going to be about almost 7,000 feet of elevation gain. So quite a bit of uphill today. I'm starting out at 6 o'clock. It's not going to get dark till 7.30 tonight. So we'll see. <clears throat> Just how far I make it. 6,700 feet of elevation gain over Sawmill Pass to Woods Lake. Let's get to it. I've come up over that ridge. Doing good. Just walking on this kind of sandy volcanic ash type stuff. Makes it a little more difficult, but enjoying it. Okay, made it up and over my first couple crests there, if you will, I guess. Been going for almost an hour, not quite. And uh, it's, it's pretty good. My breathing's doing a lot better than I thought. Um, of course, the week before I came out here, I caught a little bit of a cold. I don't know if you can tell. I'm going to be zigzagging up through here, I'm pretty sure, and then kind of cutting through some of those boulders. Uh, probably take me a good little bit to get up there, but I'm pretty sure that's where the trail's going. Uh, I generally am not very good at that game though, guessing where I'll be heading, but if I remember correctly from last year, I think that's what we'll be doing. So, sun is just now kind of crested over the mountains over here east of me. And uh, it's not it's not warmed up yet. It's still only seven o'clock, so I'll have a couple hours before it gets good and hot. So I better get to it. Look at that! So that's the canyon I'm going to be going. Excuse me, going up Sawmill Point. What a climb. Okay, not real sure if I got cut off a minute ago or not, but uh, as I was saying, I've been up to this point, a little over three miles in, I've been conservative with my water. Um, I've wanted to drink more than I have. I've drunk, that's a 700 milliliter bottle, and I've got that much left, and let's get down that right now. Probably going to, actually, because I've got another liter and a half in my backpack. Um, hopefully a stream is running in the next uh, I, if I remember correctly, there's a couple streams close to the Meadows area. If not, worst case scenario, I've got about maybe four more miles to Sawmill Lake. Okay, you can see behind me, up through here, uh, there's kind of a, a hump there in the middle of the canyon. I think that's what they call the hog's back. And I'm going to, I think, go around the, the right side of it and then back uh, back through those canyons right there okay so as you can tell maybe there is a stream behind me sitting on this nice rock enjoying the weather contemplating how many mountain lions are sitting on these rocks around me licking their chops but other than that it's a glorious day this is about four and a half miles in so water four and a half miles in in September I was uh, hoping for this, but you know, preparing for the worst. So this is good. Um, here's the canyon. Spectacular. And I started down there where it's flat. <clears throat> you can see right here, this is what I was talking about earlier when I were on the other side. That's the hog's back. So I've been on the opposite side of that zigzagging up for the past couple hours. <clears throat> Feeling it in my legs, they, the lactic acid buildup is, is big time. I'm leaving the meadow. Well, I'm going to be walking around it a little bit more. 
There it is. Um, eight. Threw down my mat and uh, laid down for about 20, 25 minutes. And uh, now I'm heading up to Sawmill Lake. It's a little less than two miles up to Sawmill Lake and it's gonna be up, of course. It's gonna be uh, quite a bit of up. I just looked at the map. So we'll just take it slow, 11.30, no rush. Alright, I'm still going up. I haven't been videoing or taking many pictures because uh, I'm dead. My legs are anyway. <clears throat> I'm having to stop quite a bit, but it's okay. This is a uh, very rough trail to head up, as if I didn't know that already, but it's sinking in now. <laughs> Okay, so I made it here a little before 1.30, so that's good. Uh, I'm going to check in. I've rented one of these Garmin's. Uh, I'm going to check in with the wife. I told him as long, as long as I made it up here that first day, then you didn't have anything to worry about. So <laughs> there we go. So we're going to do that. I'm going to drink something, going to eat something. Probably gonna go soak my feet just a little bit, so we'll get back to it. All right, so I'm leaving sawmill. I watered up, drank a whole bunch, drank a Gatorade powder too, ate some more. This trail. Has been incredible. Awful, amazing. I don't you know, it's kind of hard to differentiate right now. I definitely did not conquer this trail. Uh, it's conquered me, but hopefully, hopefully it'll let me up and over today. All right, so up there, the promised land uh, this last what my app said that gut hooks app said what would be the last mile it seemed like about two and a half miles uh, my body is done for the day it's called it I think I see the sun on the other side of this bush oh my gosh Did it. You see that sign right there, baby? Sawmill Pass, 11347. Oh my goodness. unbelievable unbelievable I'm see how silly I'm, I'm getting emotional that's probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life so proud of it so, there's probably maybe a few people watching that think I'm kind of blowing it out of proportion and maybe you're right but from my perspective a 33 year old 25 pounds overweight eat way too much fast food 
I only trained what well, I went on like three day hikes leading up to this the months before did no training and it was probably a crazy a crazy thing to ask my body to do to climb up almost 7,000 feet but I did it oh my goodness all right I gotta calm down there's still at least a mile and a half probably before I get down off this pass into an area where I can camp so I'm gonna take a breather for a minute collect my thoughts and, and go it's four o'clock right on the button I want to say it's not gonna get dark until about seven but I'm gonna plan on six just in case all right amen There's Woods Lake. For the record, I did not know today when I was at Sawmill Meadow and I started up that two mile stretch to Sawmill Lake. I was going to get here today. So I made it. This is not Woods Lake. Woods Lake is actually the other way. Um, I went a little past it, but uh, as I was kind of meandering through uh, in between both of them, you know, it was kind of hard to find a spot for the tent that's far enough away from the water. You know, I'm, I'm back up in there. But uh, <clears throat> did some did some washing. Washed my socks, underwear, jumped in the lake. This lake actually was not that cold. It was a lot warmer than Sawmill even, uh, which was strange to me. But we're here. It is, I want to say it's around six. Can't look at my watch right now, but long day. <clears throat> Just a short recap. Started at six o'clock this morning. Uh, made it up to Sawmill Point by 8.30. And uh, my legs, though, <clears throat> I don't know if I pushed a little too hard too early, but dang, they felt it. They felt it pretty pretty early. But um, 
So after that, you know, had some kind of gradual ups and downs um, the next couple miles actually. And so I started feeling a little overconfident, I think. I got to a couple streams, so I had water, and um, I think I <clears throat> thought I was a little further than I actually was. By the time I got to Sawmill Meadow, it was, you know, my legs were just gone. I had to eat, I laid down, prop, propped my legs up, um, good 30 minutes, and uh, then uh, headed back, headed back on the trail. That last mile up to Sawmill Lake about killed me. So, got Sawmill Lake, you know, jumped in, refreshed, ate some more. I think the food was, I think I'm, I'm bonking out. Um, I'm running, when I'm running low on food, so I think that's what it is. I need to just eat a little more, but only brought so much. <laughs> but, uh, after Sawmill Lake, I felt refreshed for a good little bit, but dang, that last mile, it was rough. I, I thought, you know, somebody was going to have to drag me up to the top. I ended up making it. Sawmill Pass was awesome. I love it up there. And then uh, meandered down <clears throat> through this basin area. Found this place. So I'm about to eat some supper. I'm about to eat some supper. I'm going to make a, send a couple messages home. And I'm going to call it an early night probably. Walking along this, uh, this is the bank here. I've got to end up right over in there. I gotta get over to that side, that's where the trail is. So I'm just gonna kind of enjoy this lakefront here. Hopefully, we'll see what where it ends up. I know where I have to go, but we'll just have to find the easiest, easiest way to get there. So 7.45, so I'll probably be back on the trail in 10 minutes or so, maybe less. And uh, on our way down to the junction with the JMT, I think it's just maybe two miles. Um, and uh, that's where I camped my last night, last time, so. Uh, gorgeous morning, as you can tell, gorgeous. Okay, so here we go down the canyon. I'm pretty sure this the trail's going to follow it for most of it. It's been doing a lot of steady downhill. Um, I'm not going to complain at all about downhill on this trip. Not one more time. Um, after yesterday, I'll take all the downhill I can get. So, there you go. Views just keep getting better. Check this out.
to start it out Down a dirty road Start it out All alone And the sun went down As across the hill And the town lit up Right, so had a little early lunch. Well, actually, it wasn't too early. Um, spam taco with cheese, hot sauce. Uh, been resting, soaked my feet a little bit, got some water, and I'm about to head out from the bridge. I'm planning on camping, hopefully around Lower Ray Lake. I think's what I want to do. So it's going to be the first one we get to. It's still going to be about five and a half miles of uphill, pretty much. So. 11.50 and uh, so let's get it. It wasn't lying, it's a, quite a bit uphill. I mean, it's going to be about 2,000 feet or so, I think, but the good thing is there's been a lot of, you know, up, then kind of flat, taper off, up, so it lets you catch your breath. The bad thing today is, man, that sun is hot, beating down on me. I feel like it's hotter than yesterday in the desert. But, uh, you know, every now and then I get a little piece of shade like this, so I just gotta make sure I don't overheat. But uh, doing well. I haven't taken a lot of pictures just because I've tried to keep my momentum going. So we'll see if that changes. Okay, Dollar Lake. Very gorgeous place and with a lot of good camping sites, except it's closed for restoration right now. And to add just one more thing, see that right there? That is Fin Dome. And uh, that is where I think Lower Ray is right at the base of that. So that's where I'm at. 215. Might take me, I don't know, an hour or so. I had to look at the map. It might be a little further. 215. So we'll say I'll be there about four. Just a small recap. Uh, they started off good down at Woods Lake. I had what, two and a half miles or so. Got back down to the JMT. <clears throat> Pretty straightforward. Then I had about 3.6 miles of downhill to uh, Woods Creek Bridge. Again, straightforward. No, no pains, no elements. <clears throat> uh, had lunch and all at the bridge and uh, let's see here from there I left about 1150 and had five and a half miles of and about 2500 feet of elevation gain so <clears throat> not too bad I'm just honestly way out of shape and uh, you know still coming in from 500 feet of elevation to these you know day number two it's it still still hits me my biggest thing today was uh as a no-no and i let myself get dehydrated i didn't stop for enough water i thought i could just go and push through but uh that was stupid 
So when I, by the time I got here to Ray, uh, you know, anytime I'd squat down to put a tent stake in, stand up, I almost wouldn't pass out. So got a Gatorade powder down and another liter of water down. And I put some food in my belly and feeling a lot better. Uh, jumped in the jumped in the lake and uh, soaked my legs, and here we are. Go enjoy the rest of it. seven o'clock from my campsite which it's kind of at the very end of it <clears throat> there's some other areas lots of camping here with uh, bear boxes and I know middle ray that's where most people camp I thought this would be more uh, congested so I kind of stopped before this but there was literally only one person over here so feel free to go to the the camping areas at lower ray where the bear boxes is we are starting. I think uh, we're going to be going up Glen this morning. We've got about, I think, 2,500 feet of elevation gain. And let's get to it. All right. So this is Middle Ray. I'm going to be, I think, heading down across through there and behind this one. And. I'm not sure that might be Glen or Glen might be further over. So, gorgeous morning. It's kind of hard to <clears throat> get any distance done. Keep on wanting to take pictures. I do want to add that I still think the elevation is getting to me just a little bit. This morning I didn't really want to eat any breakfast. Stomach's just a little weird. Not like sick, sick, but a little off. And, uh, you know, I told you I had a cold before I left. And it's kind of not going away. Just keep, you know, having cough stuff up, but it is what it is. Just don't think that helps me at these high elevations. But we only got one thing to do, and that's keep on going. I told Sarah I was going to crawl to Whitney if I had to so that's what we'll do all right guys you're gonna have to move eventually this guy's just been uh, standing here in front of me for the last little bit If you can tell probably can't but there's somebody walking across that ridge right now which tells me that is Glen all right so I'm not gonna venture to guess how high up and how much more I have to go still quite a bit but making good progress Here's my view right now. I'm going to get a snack. Not too bad. Just trying to get a rhythm going. And, uh, you know, not, 
not trying to overdo it, taking too big of steps and all, and just, just keeping the legs going. And uh, I'm gonna stop and eat. It's still, it's just now nine o'clock, but I'm gonna get some food in me. Been hiking almost two hours. I'm gonna try and do that a lot better today. That and drink more water. So. All right, guys. That's where I came from. I'm going just right up there. That gentleman is. It's 9:22. Did better than I thought I would. did it. See me, I know the sun's in the way. Heading down off of Glen, 11,940 feet. That was nice up there. Gorgeous day, no wind, blue skies. It's 9.50 right now. So I made it up there a lot better time than I thought I was shooting to make it up there by 10 o'clock. And uh, so got up there, drank some water, took another bite to eat. Sat up there for about 15, 20 minutes talking. And now we're heading down. We're gonna go down about, maybe it's three and a half more miles of downhill to, uh, I wanna say it's like the Vedette Meadow area. And then we'll just play it by ear from there. I don't have to go all the way up Forester today, but I'd like to get up some elevation uh, before the evening. Made it past the the Charlotte Lake uh, Trail, and where you can cut off and go up to Kearsarge Pass. So I think there's another uh, another trail junction for Kearsarge up here, but kind of in between those two. Eating a lunch around 11. I do not feel good at all. I'm just kind of nauseous. I forced my food down. Nauseous. I have zero energy. Figured after I got over Glen today, you know, it'd kind of be smooth, smooth trekking for a while, but hasn't been the case. So I don't know what it is, it's this altitude or what, but it's just hitting me hard. So I'm gonna rest here just a few, few more minutes. Maybe that give the my food a little time to give me some energy, and uh, then we'll we'll hit the trail again. Still got a couple more miles of of mostly down, so. So we'll see if things can turn around. It's 
pretty stunning. So, of course, as you probably know, the trail is gonna go down to the bottom and then up. So you already kind of see what you'll have to go through. So, if you can tell back there, there's my tent and all. Lots of daylight left, so I washed all my clothes. Well, except the one I've been sleeping in. And uh, here is the view. Not too bad. So this is my view while I'm eating supper. But after looking at a map and all and remembering kind of what I'd, what I'd seen on Google, Google Maps, I'm gonna zoom in. Ultimately, tomorrow, you see this ridge? There's a ridge right there going up. I'm pretty sure the trail is gonna go kind of behind it at first and then switch back up to the ridge and basically the ridge is going to take me I don't want to say most of the way but a lot of the way up and then Forrester is kind of behind behind that ridge right there in between these two peaks so I'm wrong a whole heck of a lot of times but I do remember a little bit of a ridge well type and it might be not just on top of the ridge but on the other side Pretty sure that's where I'm going this far. It's a little less than five miles. Okay. Leaving camp 645 in the morning. Well, we've got a little less than five miles to the top of Forester. About I think it's a little less than 3,000 feet of elevation possible okay so that is where I came from this morning I'm not exactly sure where I camped but uh, I, was, I might have been next to the that opening there might have been a little further down actually <clears throat> doing well this morning just going slow and just kind of enjoying it a little chilly, but that's okay because I'm hiking uphill. All right, so about a mile and a half in, going well. The path is so, knock on wood, it's so smooth, easy gradient so far. I'm heading up behind this, going up and on the other side of that ridge. And uh, I guess three and a half, maybe four miles. I, I don't know for sure, but it's one foot in front of the other. Um, enjoying this morning tremendously this area up here is, is gorgeous there were a few spots to camp up here not too far away would have shortened my uh, day today but honestly I loved where I was last night and it gave my legs a little time to relax and rest because uh, they've been feeling it since that first day so I think it actually helped me more than than getting a mile ahead so All right, that little V there in the center is Forrester. I think we're gonna be, end up traversing that mountain from the right to get to it, but we'll see. So we've got a couple miles to go. I just stopped at the last creek crossing, I believe. Uh, I still got plenty of water, but I sat down and ate. It's 8.45, so two hours since I left camp. I'm 1.9 miles from the pass and I'm at 11,800 feet so going up to 13 
two ish. About 1500 feet more, 1400 feet more in two miles. So it's gonna be a little steeper. And we gotta make this final push. So I'm on top of the world. This isn't forestry yet, but I still just, this is incredible. I came from switch back and down through here and around that and down in the valley this morning. Nine o'clock, feeling great. About a mile and a half, maybe a little more to the top. Okay, I just want to take this moment to say I was finally right. I am on that ridge that I said last night would lead up to Forrester. See it right here? And then I started way down there in the valley, kind of around the bend. All right, I was right. Finally. Look what I found. The top. Sequoia National Park, Forester Pass, elevation 13,200 feet. And there's where I'm headed.
Quickly recap, started in uh, Center Basin today. Had a really great camp spot. Woke up before light and kind of started getting everything together. Left about 6.45 or so. And from there, I could, uh, I could see the ridge that ultimately I was going to be on. It was kind of intimidating. But I uh, had five and a half miles and about 2,800 um, feet of elevation. The trail through there was tremendous. Great job on the trail work uh, through there. I mean, I couldn't have asked for it to be any, any better. It was a lot better than Glenn. But uh, just kind of a nice, for the most part, smooth <clears throat> gradient. No big boulders, you know, climbing back and forth. Just a nice, smooth gradient. You could really get a good, good rhythm going. And um, <clears throat> I killed it. So, you know, it was, it was the best I felt this whole trip. Maybe I'm just getting acclimated. I don't know. But, um, you know, took a couple breaks. Ate, ate a couple times on the way up. And before I knew it, I was up there before 11, I believe, about 10:45, maybe around 11. I can't remember. Uh, spent some time up there, and then headed down, <coughs> ate lunch a little before 12, and then from there I was in. I don't, I don't even know if it has a name. This, this basin area, the upper basin area, uh, from on the south side of Forster, and uh, you know, gorgeous area um, for the first two hours. It was it was it was nice, and then after that, kind of got you know a little tiring, getting lower elevation. The sun was starting to beat down on me, and uh, <clears throat> no trees. I, I probably didn't have any shade for a good four, four or five hours today. Um, so got down to the Tyndall Creek area and wasn't that impressed. You know, I didn't spend a lot of time there. I got down to you know where the Ranger cutoff was, and it was just hot, dry, dusty, and I kept coming up towards a. Uh, the, these Tyndall frog ponds, um, really gorgeous area. Not not that great for swimming. They didn't have a lot of gravel and stuff on the bottom, so it's just kind of muddy, but gorgeous nonetheless. Uh, just south of me here, about a mile, is Bighorn Plateau. I thought about going up to there, but in the end, I decided I'd rather just soak my feet, relax, and uh, call it an early day. Got here about 2:15, I think and uh, I've just been chilling ever since. Uh, tomorrow's gonna be about the same amount of miles, so I might get up early just so I can get to Guitar Lake a little earlier. I don't know, but uh, good day, best day I've had so far, you know, how I've been feeling. Uh, knee started getting a little sore on about two and a half hours of downhill, but that's okay, that's expected. And so I will, uh, I will see you in the morning. Good morning, day five. Um, about to leave the Tyndall Frog Ponds and head on up towards Big Horn Plateau. It's seven o'clock. Got got a little colder last night. It's probably upper 30s. So um, need to get going so I can warm up. And uh, let's do it. We're gonna have about 11 to 11 and a half miles, I think. And uh, we'll just see what kind of pace we do. All these old trees through here are just spectacular. There was a lot of large ones. <clears throat> Looked a little different. I don't know if that's the the bristle cone people talk about. That's a really old tree, but got a couple pictures of some. But just walking through this this forest here is pretty neat. Very interesting trees. Okay. So you have that big flat mesa to the right, and then that notch next to it, that's Forrester. So that's where I was about 10.30 yesterday. And here we are. Came down through there and up here. And now we're going up there. All right, Bighorn Plateau, absolutely stunning. You 
see the lake back there. And one person camp next to it. I should have come up here, but it's all right. All right, so so leaving Bighorn Plateau. Been down there, just enjoying it, taking pictures. Uh, you can see a tent down there. Guy's name is Mark. I met him up on Forester Pass yesterday. So absolutely gorgeous. Don't know what else to say about it. It's incredible up here. I, sh I wish I had a few days just to spend walking around through here maybe in the future all right next i think is wright creek or wallace creek something like that a couple miles down <clears throat> just gonna be trucking on right now Heading towards Crabtree, so we can take a left there up to Guitar. Mount Whitney, literally only 11.7 trail miles away. Okay, just grinding away uphill now. Hit kind of a low spot, and now we're going back up, of course. <sighs> Haven't made too much progress, still about a little over four miles to Crabtree. I've been uh, stopping and talking with a lot of other hikers that are uh, summiting tomorrow so just been chit-chatting everybody's pretty excited not that it's just coming to an end but you get to their final goal so. Down to Crabtree still going at a pretty pretty good pace. Um, really, really smooth trail, really nice trail. So it's kind of a gradual downhill for the most part. So we are uh, heading on down. Enjoyable hiking today. Okay, so just past uh, a junction to take you down to Crabtree Meadow. I think there's another one right down here, and that one's closer to the ranger station. But as of right now, I'm about four miles away from my camping area. So it's 11.26, I'm getting hungry. So I was gonna see if I could get down closer to some water down here and uh, shade the spot and uh, eat 
some eat some lunch. Uh, a little windy today. Got me worried. I hope it's not going to be a uh, real cold, windy night, but something's telling me it is. So as long as it's clear, thought I heard something. As long as it's clear morning tomorrow, we'll be okay though. up here we're coming into this basin area I think guitar like it's right up here but really amazing trick is trying to find a camp spot that's not going to be totally out in the wind. I don't know if it's going to be possible. I don't know if I'm going to go up to that bridge up above it. They say there's some spots up there next to some smaller tarns. Uh, we'll see. So as you can tell, I've gone past Guitar Lake. You can see why it's named Guitar Lake as well. But uh, I'm going up here above it and there's a little pond up there they say and there's some camping spots a woman told me there's only one tent up there right now so I think I'll have plenty of space okay so I'm up I guess it's about maybe half a mile I don't know above Guitar Lake uh, winds been howling but we got up here this little lake right here it's a little bit lower so that's good and check out this spot so there was only a couple more, a couple more good spots over there, and these are kind of out in the open. So I was lucky to nab this one. And so let me show you my view. Check that out. Not too shabby. So, it is 2.30. I made it here a lot quicker time than I thought. It was, there was some easy hiking today, but man, that last stretch up from Crabtree was pretty tough. But I think I'm just excited to get up there. This right here is what will be going up tomorrow. Some there, I, don't, I can't really see them, but there's switchbacks through here. And I'm not entirely sure, but I think we're gonna go back up to the left to Trailcrest. But we will see in the morning. Here's my little home tonight. See everything kind of blocked behind this wall. Wind and everything's coming that way. So, so I'm pretty protected. I know my tent is sideways like this, but I waited for a good 45 minutes judging the wind. And there's just as much wind coming from the back side from here. So I just kind of went with the slope, which would what, what would be the easiest sleeping. So it is what it is. I staked it out more than I normally do. So here's hoping. So, 
As you can see, I'm in the tent. I'm just about to boil some water for some oatmeal. It's pretty cold this morning. I had the water in here. I actually kept my water bottles in my little koozie thing wrapped up. They didn't freeze, but probably could have if I left them outside. So let's pour this in real quick. Okay, so while I'm letting my oatmeal sit for a minute, it's not actually super early, even though it's real dark in here. It's 5.30. Um, I got up to use the restroom just a little after 2, and you could see headlamps, you know, zigzagging up the mountain. It was pretty cool. Um, a lot of people have a long day ahead of them where they have to get home and, and all, so that's one reason they, they start early. Uh, another reason is they want to see the sunrise, so... Um, <clears throat> it's probably going to be windy and cold up there at sunrise. At the moment down here, it's not windy, which is a good thing. Let's cross our fingers it stays that way at least till after we put the tent up. But uh, So I'm going to kind of just do my normal thing, maybe leave here maybe around 7 or whatnot. It's four, a little over 4 miles to the top, so we'll get there before lunch, surely. And then we just got a long trek down. Time to eat some oatmeal. All right, so all packed up, ready to get on the trail. I'm in my fleece right now. Probably when I start heading up this hill, I'm gonna take it off. <clears throat> uh, with the wind died down, there is, um, it's not as considerably cold. So, so we'll see how I feel when I get up here. I've got this fleece and then up top, I've also got my green down. So uh, we'll get to it. I guess I should add. So where we're going, I'm going to walk down this way, zigzag, switch back up this. It doesn't look like much, but it's quite a bit away. So a person would look like just a little tiny speck up there. And then we're going to head to the right, out of view, switch back all the way up to the top. And somewhere over in here is Trail Crest. So that's where you can either go down the other side or go to Whitney. So you can drop your pack or how much weight you want there. And then you traverse back over and behind this <clears throat> to go to Whitney. It's two miles to Trail Crest and basically two miles to Whitney, so four miles. I'm at 11,800 feet and Whitney is 14,500 feet, so you can do the math there. Guys, yeah, I did just notice this before I left. My pond here was icing over. So you can tell how cold it did get. Or at least how cold. Huh. All right, getting higher. I don't know I'd, how much higher. I don't know how close we are to Trail Junction, but as you can see, Guitar Lake down there. Definitely had to take my fleece off. Although the higher we go, the wind's picking up a bit, and when you head in a certain direction, the towards Whitney direction on the switch back, switchbacks, it's hitting you right in the face. Kind of chilly. But, could be worse. I started off just a little, a little slow, a little tired this morning. My legs felt like they were already zapped, which is not good. But uh, as we've gotten higher, even though the air's getting thinner, I'm feeling a little stronger. So that's a good sign. Just take breaks when we need to and try and find the rhythm. Okay, so I just passed.
going.
So, literally 30 yards past trail crest, the temperature climbed like 30 degrees and the wind has stopped. So, we got seven miles down to Whitney Portal. There's cheeseburgers and beer there. And hopefully I can find a ride to Hitchman. Let's get to it. I guess I should show you where I'm headed. All the way down there, about 7,000 feet, 6,000 feet, something like that. So, look behind me, it's just a wall of rock. I just came down that. That's where they, the infamous 99 switchbacks are. I didn't count them. Could have been 199, I don't know. Felt like I was in kind of one of those loops like on Groundhog's Day where it was just the same thing over and over and I was never going to get down it. Got my shoe wet in this little bitty creek and I just wasn't paying attention. Slipped. This means I am leaving the Whitney zone. I just got to the sign. I'm not real sure how far that means I still got to go. I haven't looked at the map, I've just been going. So everything basically from my shoulders down hurts. <clears throat> but that's okay. Okay, <clears throat> 308 in the afternoon. I'm walking through the portal here, I guess. I don't know what you'd call it, but <clears throat> this means I am done with my JMT. Oh my goodness. It's been a long time coming, but I did it. Thanks to everybody that helped me. This feels so amazing. Right here. <clears throat> Done. What a day.